I'm, it is too late to I mean, make a huge presentation. Anyway, what I would do is I would just quickly run through what I have done. My presentation is basically on one of the important things people have talked about the practicalities, uh, from mostly from the grassroots and all. I am trying to look at innovation and intellectual property rights both globally and locally, but in view of the short of the time, I have just run through most of the things. Basically, you know, we, there are a whole lot of issues in the what you call as low-carbon innovations. We need all types of innovations, both uh, cumulative, radical, and all. And diffusion here is very important as development because we are actually don't have a lot of decades. We are running out of time. We need few decades to do whatever possible meaningful we can do. So the question is, how do you do whole all the things, linking innovation policy with environmental policy, and then putting the whole lot of thing into this sustainable development? But in terms of technology assessment, we really have a whole lot of un unresolved issues when it comes to low carbon innovations. There are no specific methodologies, there are a whole lot of things we are not sure of. Like, how do we technologically assess these carbon, low carbon innovations today, which we claim to be so, or sustainable in the long run and all. So these issues we need to really address. And I am not going to go into any of these major issues because that's a totally different domain. I am just stating that the whole whole issues of issue of equity versus efficiency, trade-offs between sustainability and economic benefits. These are old issues, but they are going to come again, haunt us in different forms in different ways. So we need to prepare to them. Having said that, I would now go to the core of my argument that the role of intellectual property rights and low-carbon innovations. Basically, the theory of IP says you need IP so that it can incentivize innovation. And the global patent data also shows that there is a huge north-south gap. And in many space industries, handful of companies or handful of nations hold most of the patents. And imagine economies are making a grade, but it's not full. I mean, we are just making a beginning. So the question comes is that are IPRs a barrier or facilitator or both? This is a <coughs> global debate which is happening at different levels in different fora. I would not go into the details of that now. But let us note one thing. In Cancun, there was no mention about the IP at all. There was huge talk about technology mechanism, money, this, that, but not even a single sentence on whether how do we deal with IP? So for the time being, it has been rather pushed aside, but I think it's going to come up again and again because basic countries are keen on that. So having said that, this is some of the major points like it's a barrier, it's not a barrier. You can do it on a case to case basis. And there are options, so let us not bother about IP. And anyway, I mean, there are so many technologies where things are in public domain. And in context of low carbon innovations, there are extreme positions on this. So I would not go into that now. Now, the, uh, some of the options which we have people are talking about is tweak the patent system, give priority for low carbon innovations in processing and then get them out quick. And then encourage global technology transfer through tax and other fiscal incentives. Then patent pools and then pay licensing contribution to patent pool and licensing from that could be given tax concessions. There are some moves in America on that. Then encourage uh, diffusion of technology through incentivizing sharing without invoking compulsory licensing. Then there are models like CJAR, Montreal Protocol and all. And there are other models like Eco Patent Commons, then Green Exchange, again based on Creative Commons. Then the patent pool, this is not at work, but for the AIDS, we have this United Patent Pool. Then price funds, advanced market commitments. But all these are fine. Let us also have a reality check. Patents are a huge issues because patent infringements in low-carbon low innovations are fiercely contested. And you also, well, most of you would know that there were a huge uh, legal battle on the wind energy patents even in India. So it's a huge ongoing battle. So it's not something like patents really do not matter. They do matter. And concentration is really an issue. North South gap is really an issue. And we are not sure as to whether the UNFCC technology mechanism will ever touch this issue or will it just bypass this and go, to some, uh, go on more on finance, more on uh, multilateral arrangements like that. So what are the options for developing countries within trips and beyond trips is a big question now. Having said that, I'm also just highlighting some of the points like the options like open innovation, open source, why we need policies to promote uh, low carbon innovation specifically for each country. Like for example, there is no need that <coughs> India should always depend upon the global debate or depend upon what UNS is going to do. We can also think of our own, own line. Some of the things I've just highlighted here, but I'm not um, going to detail now. And one option which we, we need to really look into this whole question of South-South collaboration and then regional collaboration. Can we combine open source and open innovation that? Can we think in terms of regional patent pools and <coughs> other using trade agreements and other bilateral initiatives to promote low carbon innovations without making IP a barrier? This is some of the options which we can, I think we can, India can take lead and do something on it. 
then we need to have a pragmatic perspective without losing some of the larger picture. <coughs> we need to look like north-south divide is going to be there, it is not going to vanish and it is going to permeate in all the things, whether it is finance or whether it is technology transfer or whether it is the way the technology mechanism is going to be managed. So, we cannot wish it away, it is going to be there. But at another level, we do not get struck with that. We can try also try to do things at national and regional level solutions, also bring in bottom up perspectives on development division. The question is, can we all do this? And if so, how do we do it? My answer to this question in a paper which I am now writing is that, yes, there are problems and the whole technology transfer debate right from the 70s till now, we know how the direction has gone and nothing much has happened on that. At the same time, we also need to really look into that for how long we are going to think in terms of, you know, global solutions and global framework agreements which do not seem to work, that will give us a solution. We need to fight on two levels. One, we need to fight at the north-south debate at the global level, but at the local level, at the national level, we need to think in terms of more innovation solutions, both in development and diffusion. For example, if ESPTO can think in terms of some tweaking the patent system, for making gecko patents, uh, some of the pa clean technology patents much more easily processing, even we can also think on those terms. Then government can go for patent pools, government can sponsor some technology sharing mechanisms. It could be something which the government can take an initiative and say, look, these are the key identified technologies for biofuels. These are the key identified technologies for this sector. We would buy these patents, we would create a pool, we would uh, encourage cross licensing so, people, so that people can take that. And also, wherever there is innovations in need, wherever there are not much innovations there, let us go for the innovations, have some sharing of IP mechanism, and then also look at the other possibility, like we can have a huge pool of institutions in India, whole lot of trained human resources, and different sectors are there. So, we can use the open innovation models and try to come up with our own solutions. It is not that we now always need to import technology and then look at the solutions from abroad. And Many of the people who had made presentations just before me were talk, talked about a whole lot of local innovations, innovation specific to that. The point is, some of these things will really work, but you also need a whole lot of innovations at the MISO level, which means that there, those innovations should be applicable at medium scale, some of the uh, enterprises, uh, very massively applicable to all the, most of the things, so that you no, know, the cumulative effect is there. So I think there we need to really tweak the IP system, <coughs> try in terms of innovation, in terms of the IP, bringing in IP much more accessible to people, and then what the governments can do, what the industry can do, they can come together, like uh, developing something like hybrid vehicle specifically for India, or hybrid uh, uh, scooters for India. Those, these are the possibilities which I think we can do in terms of low carbon innovations. So the challenge is not that you do only rhetoric, you do only local level innovation. Challenge is that in both development diffusion, it is enormous, we need radical innovations, we need cumulative innovation, we need incremental innovation. The question is, how are we going to do that, taking into account that IP do seems to be a barrier, at the same time ensuring that IP does not become a huge barrier. These are my thoughts, thank you. <laughs>